if you're doing something mm. well, right. if something that you've created, mm -hmm. if you don't make someone mad, you really didn't do a very good job. You, you gotta make someone mad? Yeah, Why somebody out there needs to be pissed at what you did oh, for it to okay, be good. Okay, okay, true, true. So I wanna call out one of our comments from the last TV show. Apparently we know nothing about that Terra, Rivian and um, DeLorean. Someone say that? Someone did say that. And uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, but, but it's like, oh, don't, and this is the second psych psychology thing and maybe he's helping us out, but oh, no, no. These guys know nothing about these brands. Don't watch this show. It's, it's not good. What? You know, when you say that, people tend to actually want to watch the show to figure out if it's really good or not. So whoever you are, thank you. Ch challenge accepted. Th thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you. You probably brought us a lot more viewer than we normally would have without that controversy. It takes one person to open the floodgates mm -hmm. to success. So if we uh, become... <laughs> I'm, I'm interested if he, he actually drives an EV or not. I mean, I don't know. I, you I you drive an EV know. for the last three years. I've only recently drove drove an EV for the last say eight months. Um, you know, to to experience that, you need to know a little bit, of course. But to actually say that, um, is he driving an EV? No, it wasn't specifically about that. It was specifically mm -hmm. about our knowledge on the DeLorean uh, scandal. Maybe it's because. He didn't like me calling Mr. John DeLorean a philanderer. Well, clearly his 10 girlfriends might, you know, differ on that and his ex-wives, <laughs> but, you know, or Aptera and their goal for a 1000 kilometer vehicle. And oh, it looks like a little oh. whatever, or even uh, our knowledge on Rivian and how, you know, like Obi-Wan Kenobi did take it down to uh, Argentina and drove it all the way back up to Los Angeles and oh. how that all went and everything like that. I did watch the film. <laughs> But anyway, we're going to talk about it, Rivian again, a taboo subject, according to, to, to him. And we thank you for bringing all these new viewers over to us. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate that. Because whenever you put a negative comment on, chances are, oh, can't be that bad. Oh, it was pretty good. Not that, not, <laughs> that's going to happen, right? <laughs> Psychology. Uh, so we're talking about Rivian mm. and Rivian's latest announcements, which actually was a surprise for most people. Rivian was slated to introduce a brand new R2 design with a brand new chassis mm -hmm, and everything mm -hmm. like that. But what they had in store next and after that, and one more thing that I'm adding on because I think most people that watched the event didn't even know about this. Uh, they're going to be very surprised. So mm. let's get on with the R2. Now, R2 was expected the whole time. R1S, R1T. R1T, R1S, they were launched during the co uh, the COVID pandemic. Yeah. And um, they were vehicles that were basically, they were promised for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, even during the filming of, of that movie, that was like two years, three years out before they even put one of these vehicles right. in someone's hands. Okay. A lot faster than Elon's Cybertruck. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> right. Um, but regardless of that, this is a brand new, the R2 was incoming. It's yeah. a brand new platform. Yeah. One that is supposed to be a lot less um, intensive to manufacture because one of the things mm. that Rivian has had problems with is the cost of the vehicles were getting really high, especially with their first production runs because they were just learning, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you remember this, but when Rivian put out the call for first pre-orders, yep. they actually wanted to adjust the price. Oh, okay. Right? They wanted to add another like 20 grand to the price if you wanted to finish the paperwork. Ooh. And obviously that's not a good PR move. They had to roll that back. So everyone that did the first round mm -hmm. of orders and everything like that, they got their truck at the price that was promised at, right? Mm -hmm. And again, this is during, uh, and, and this is amazing because they did this during the chip shortage they did this all yeah, the manufacturing that, shortage. They did this yeah. labor shortage. They tried to get them out. They they made people as happy as they could. And yet, and we'll we'll, we'll reiterate this, they're still losing about forty three thousand dollars per vehicle as they deliver per them. vehicle. Per vehicle. So so they're making a, a loss at the time. They're making a loss right now. There's other things okay. to, to kind of factor in here, but that was kind of one of the big wow moments for me as they delivered their first trucks right. to the consumer. So you're getting a big discount there. <laughs> so what was the the uh, first model called? R1. R1T and R1 R1S. Okay, the so T is the truck, the S is the SUV. SUV, all right. And we're so seeing them all over Vancouver right now. 
Okay. And you mentioned the new one is called R2. Is that the new uh, model that they're going to be releasing? The new, it's already released. And we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. So the one thing that they released, everyone expected was the R2 platform. The R2 platform mm -hmm. is a completely different platform. This is supposed to be cheaper to build, as I was saying. Okay. Uh, it has uh, some things in the R2. It's an SUV design, mm -hmm. but it's um, it uses a structural battery, much like a lot of other manufacturers like Tesla. They make the structure of the battery uh, part of the vehicle so that they can utilize less labor, less materials to put that one right. in, right? So it's actually part of the structure. It's the floorboard. Okay, okay. It's the floor right. Right, of the vehicle, right? Uh, it's Compared to the R1S and the R1T, it's not as tall and it has a shortened wheelbase. I think it's about 15 centimeters, 15 mm. centimeters. So it's a good foot shorter, yeah. right? Uh, and there's no air suspension. So there's none of that kind of complicated stuff that's there. That you find with the trucks. Yeah, okay. normally. Like you'll, I think this is a, the best parallel would be to the Model S, to the Model 3. The Model S had air suspension, all these fancy things that kind of gave it mm -hmm. that yeah. Model S <clears throat> high-end ride characteristic. Yeah. The Model 3 doesn't have any of that. More of a basic mm, kind Not of basic, like but you know, they've taken everything model. they learned yeah. from the telemetry right, right, and they right. put it into this. Okay. So the R1, R2, compared to the R1 series, it does not have the air suspension. May, maybe it's not as tow capable. I, I don't know. We'll have to find out from mm -hmm. some of the, the, the truck sites that actually test these vehicles to see if that's true. Cost saving measure, it doesn't have a removable Bluetooth speaker. I know, I know. People were very happy about the Bluetooth speakers coming out <laughs> when they're camping. Uh, they got away from that. Uh, they're, it, compared to the R1 series, which had no glove boxes, Oh, no glove boxes? No. The R2 series has two. <laughs> okay. Two in the front. Two in the front, which yeah. is very, very handy. You need one at least. Yeah. For I don't documents. know what's in the middle one though, but it looks like it could mm. have the charging to put your phone there. All I didn't, right, right. no one's really quite seen it yeah. up close. A lot of people now, a lot of these EVs now, they have wireless charging yep. now. So. so maybe it's a place for your phones <clears throat> to go because it is supposed to be a lifestyle adventure vehicle. So somewhere mm. to put your valuables like that might be a good thing. Maybe it's fireproof. I don't know. I just said right. that, okay? I just made that up, okay? Uh, so <laughs> maybe it is, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, you still got flashlights in the door though. So one of the things that was really fun is that when you get out in the wilderness, you gotta see where your tent oh, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flashlights okay. are in the door, they charge in the door so you have something to look for things. Oh, right, okay? right, right. So right. that's okay. kind of really okay. neat. And uh, there's a new haptic uh, scroll wheel steering wheel. It has these two rollers on both sides that mm -hmm. depending on how you roll, how you click, yep. it gives you feedback on that. Oh, okay. Um, not unlike the uh, the way that Tesla steering wheels want to give you that haptic feedback, but just a lot more tactile because they're mm. dials, aluminum dials. Yeah, you, you want to be able to know- um, click, 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 click. Yeah, if it's going up and down, click it, yeah. you know, that kind of thing, like a, a rocker kind of People uh, need to feel those things, yeah. right? And yeah. that's something I think they, uh, Virbian got really right with this. Also 360 degree cameras and radars to support a self-driving. So you can have cameras all around the car. Yep, it, that okay, goes with okay. their version of Sentry Mode, which is uh, I think Rivian Secure or something. I can't remember what the name of it, but it does have okay. recording capability that you can utilize with any of your Kingston, you know, drives. Oh, you just plug in your plug storage in, right? device in there and start recording. Okay, you know, preferably one of their um, their their rugged drives. I think that's mm -hmm. better than a USB drive, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay, and uh, you know. Got it's uh, got comfortable it, seats, like five yeah, seats. Yeah, it seats five comfortably. Okay. It seats five comfortably still with that shortened wheelbase. I think they've done some tweaking on the interior, mm -hmm. things that they've learned from the R1 series. And I think that's very valuable. And of course, um, they've got the sliding glass and hatch opening for the rear. Now this is, uh, if you uh, if you remember the Forerunner from Toyota, right? the, the back, the clash used to come down, you yeah, used to be able to yeah, look through yeah. it. So if you have a two by four, you don't have to open up the hatch. This has the same thing. Okay. You can also open up the hatch all the way. Okay. So this is kind of a, uh, not a new thing, but something that people, if you own the, uh, uh, you know, like a forerunner from the mm -hmm. Toyota days mm -hmm. when they still had that model out there, uh, I think they still have it. It's just, you know, the older ones, it's more memorable. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, there's a large frunk in the front that is functional enough to fit uh, from what their demo is, a full size carry-on luggage and a couple backpacks. So you have a trunk and a front yep. for storage. It's all in there. 
Okay. Okay. So right. uh, plenty of room for an entire family of five to have all their luggage and everything to go on vacation, to go into the wilderness and everything like that. Mm -hmm. They were also showing off different accessories and everything like that, like a tent that you can put up top, uh, a cargo area. Oh, you mean you put for the top. the top areas for storage? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, over top of the um, the 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 the. the cargo bars mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. could they're also optional probably because it doesn't yeah. seem to come with them uh so that's really neat and of course you're going to get some motor options now this this new platform will support all three motor configurations dual single rear wheel drive and also a tri-motor configuration which cool. gives you the torque in in the towing and the speed. So that'd be the higher end model, right? The, the Obviously the, the higher trim, right? Okay. There's gonna also be two uh, two battery options. Okay. Probably the larger uh, larger battery will be paired with the tri-motor because you're gonna need a little bit more yeah, battery life yeah, yeah. For the, to power the extra motors. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not running all the time, you still have to devote some power to them, some reserve to them. Mm. And up to 300 miles of range with so the top battery. 300 miles, what's that in kilometers? So um, like well, time, what times one point six, right? Four hundred and eighty something. So four hundred and eighty. That's that's. Why a don't lot. you do the math on here, and I'll go over yeah. some of the other things just to make it right. So of of that, uh, you've got a ten to eighty percent charge time of under eighty. Uh, under 30 minutes. So that means that you're heading over to a 350 kilowatt hour charger. Uh, I, they didn't give any specs on the architecture. I'm not sure if it's an 800 volt architecture or not. Mm -hmm. um, that would usually give you the faster charging speeds. Uh, and um, you are looking at speeds of zero to 60 in under three seconds. <laughs> under three seconds. That's, that's Likely probably yeah. in the tri-motor configuration, probably a little bit slower in the yeah. rear wheel drive. And of course, the dual motor configuration. Now, the price. Hmm. Could this be the Rivian's M3 Model 3 moment? <laughs> well, um, yes and no. This is an SUV. The Model 3 is a sedan, right? It's a more of a sporty sedan look to yeah. it. It's yeah. more stripped down and everything like that. This is an SUV, full featured, everything's comfortable, blah, blah, blah. $45,000 US is where it starts. 45000 Now this is- That's quite cheap. It's not bad, so seventy thousand Canadian, right. roughly. So if you think about forty five thousand as a starting point, you're gonna get the base trim, you're gonna get the rear wheel drive, you're probably gonna get right. two hundred and fifty miles of range, something like that. You're probably going to get um, just some things that are taken away, maybe no mm. moonroof, moon something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but still very respectable for a vehicle to fit five passengers comfortably. They're obviously not going to take away the front. The front is going to be there. The storage is going to be in the rear. Are you going to get flashlights in the doors? Yes, that's kind of their trademark. Right. Um, but, you know, maybe, how, maybe no mover. How much is it cheaper than the original R1? 30,000. 30,000. So 30,000 cheaper. Yeah. So you're getting a 45,000 basic trim, just what you said. Yeah. Uh, US dollars now. So. Uh, that's that's good for well, an EV, to be honest with you. That recovers a lot of the loss that they're taking because yeah. it's also thirty thousand dollars less. They minus forty three thousand. They're only losing thirteen thousand dollars per vehicle now, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> uh, and they may lose a lot less because this particular vehicle does have yeah. uh, the. It, it's supposed to scale up faster because of all the things that they learned from the R1 series, right? Because right. it's very difficult to have your first year and get everything right. They learned a lot. Mm. So in the first 24 hours with a $100 deposit in I'm, the US only. $100 only. Yep, <laughs> refundable. 68,000 68, pre-orders. That's a that, that's a, that's crazy, and that's twenty four hours. In twenty four hours, sixty eight thousand orders. Now keep in mind, pre orders, yeah, in twenty four hours. Now keep that's, in mind, Rivian is not a household name like Tesla is. Yeah. So the fact that they had sixty eight thousand or pre orders on on a forty five thousand dollar vehicle and up, mm -hmm. because you don't configure your vehicle until you get the hey, we're ready for you. Come on in and configure your vehicle. Right, right, that's right, right. Pretty good. So, um. What does it what does it look like? Does it look similar to the, the R1? It's exactly like the R1S, only shorter, shorter with a with a slightly shorter wheelbase. Right. Okay. 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 So so you're getting something similar to an R1 uh, for a very good price. Yes. And it's more again mass marketed for kind of the average guy oh, who yeah. wants to go EV, right? It looks great. Don't get me wrong. It looks fantastic. Okay. It looks like 
Uh, like the air suspension, are you going to mm. need that? No, probably not. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that they trim back, like the Bluetooth speakers in the doors. They are removable. Do you need that? Mm. No. <laughs> right? Well, a 300-mile three, I mean, three range is, uh, I just worked it out, 482 kilometers. That's respectable. That's good. That's, that's great. Good. If you drive it really conservatively, you might even be able to go to four, five, 400, 550. Yeah. yeah. Maybe on, even 600, depending on, on where um, you are. On my uh, wife's uh, ID4, a uh, full charge can do around about around about 300 kilometers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's just an uh, ID4, which is like, you know, this kind of standard uh, battery pack. It's not like high end or anything like that. So, you know, 300 kilometers is kind of like the range. Yeah. You know, uh, so an EV. good. It's good. Yeah, it, it looks is good. good. Looks good on paper. Um, if, if any of you are old enough, you may... Uh, you may remember a vehicle that was called the Lada Neva. It kind of had, it was a hatchback, but it was really rugged looking with big tires. <laughs> it looked like a, looked like a, G, uh, looked like a, uh, a GTI, but it just was big and very <laughs> Russian looking. Do you remember that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, is it Neva, you said? Neva. 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 Um, but I know Lada brand, of course, we have it in the UK. Yeah. And uh, Lava, Lada is like a, a Russian brand, isn't it? I think uh, Rus so. <laughs> West, uh, Eastern Europe or yeah. something. Fiat and, and Lada at some point and, were yeah. and, friends. Um, <laughs> and they, they, they weren't that great. Uh, people used to like take, you know, the, take the piss out of the car because it looked so ugly and it was so badly made. Yeah, but it was beige and it had big <laughs> tires on it and looked like an SUV of that day. Yeah, so okay. it had the hatch and everything like that. You must remember this vehicle because it looked like an overgrown <laughs> uh, overgrown GTI, overgrown <laughs> Golf, right? Okay. So that shape, that style, um, right. and the AMC Eagle was another one. The AMC Eagle was a four door. I, th I think I heard of that one. Um, yeah. It was uh, basically, it was the SUV. It was a station wagon that looked like, was, looked like it was on a truck chassis. In the U.S. Oh, right. So the, right? you've got that like a box at the back where... It's got a hatch. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's got wood paneling. <laughs> yeah, wood paneling. Maybe not. Um, yeah, and, wood and then, paneling. And then it had like uh, uh, lamps on the front. It, like, yeah. it looked like it was yeah. off-road capable, right? <laughs> so big tires and everything like that. Short wheelbase, mm. right? These are the vehicles that people are like, hey, those are kind of quirky and fun. And, you know, they look like they go off-road. The Lada Neva specifically because it that, did have that right. angular kind of box look yeah. with the with the swooping back on it that looked like a golf but had these big tires attached <laughs> it looked like something that a child would have drawn as a vehicle okay <laughs> you got a square little box with little circles little, little, well <laughs> let us introduce you to the first one more thing from uh from rivian which is the r3 oh so they got a newer model r3 yeah, and it looks exactly like what i described it, it's basically the quirkiest looking R, uh ev that i've seen in a while and yeah. it's and I love it. I oh, love it. I really? love it. Love it. I love haven't it. seen it, so it's gonna be what well, exactly like what you described, like really boxy. More kind of like the the Lada Neva. Go right. look up a photo right now, okay? Let me because look uh, you can do that. I'll go over some of the specs. Right. So the same platform as the R two, which okay. means, but it has an even shorter wheelbase. Okay. okay. Um, will it seat five comfortably? Um, some people have looked in the back and they say that it has a little bit less room, but we'll let them sort that out in production also has two glove boxes. Okay, okay. Unlike the R1 series, which is a value add. Yeah. And of course, there's a large front on the front for backpacks and mm -hmm. gear. Same, mm -hmm. it looks like it's exactly the same layout as the R2, so you can put in a carry, two, it looks like two carry-ons and two backpacks, right? Right, right. Uh, The rear glass, very interesting. Uh, they used to do this in hatchbacks long ago. Uh, I think it's the RX, no, maybe not. One of them did this, where the glass would open independently from the, oh, from the hatch. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's very right. smart. Uh, I can't remember which car it was. But uh, one yeah, of them yeah. did that, and I can't remember which one. But it's very handy for you if you needed to pass skis and other things yeah. pass through it. And that's why I mentioned the Lada Neva. Like, you got the photo there? Right it there. Kinda, it looks like that. <laughs> this, I, I'm sure that someone was inspired by this. But uh, it's, it's by looking at that, the Lada Neva, yep. it's actually smaller. Is that what I'm saying? It's the smaller. R3 is smaller? Yeah, it's, like okay. I said, Shorter wheelbase, mm -hmm. which means a smaller vehicle. Yep. Uh, and it's more of a kind of a, I would say that if uh, if there was the Forester, 
This would be like the uh, Impreza. All right. Right. So that kind of thing, right? So, okay. More like an Outback. <laughs> so it, it's cool. It's cool. Um, and the, I like the fact that it yeah. still has the new haptic scroll wheel, steering wheel design. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very handy. It, it gives you kind of, if you, if, if Elon wanted everyone to put their hands on the wheel and not touch anything, mm. I think that Rivian got it more right because it has the scroll, right. aluminum, uh, the clickiness, the haptics and everything. I think that what they've got there is really good. I also believe that, you know, like with the 360 degree cameras and radar system, okay. um, they're, Full driving system will be very interesting to see. Full self driving system will be very interesting to see. Yeah, uh, R.J. Scringe, who is the CEO, who uh, some people have pointed out looks a little bit like Steve O from you know like <laughs> Steve uh, O. <laughs> yeah, except he doesn't have that voice, but he looks Steve-o. like his. Uh, he looks like Steve O. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, he said that. Um, yeah, it, the full the, the self driving mm-hmm. is going to be something that you know is going to be a great experience. Okay. So hopefully he's tested it out enough himself to know that, or it might be a jackass moment where you let go <laughs> of the wheel and oh no, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, up to three hundred miles range, probably a little bit more due to the fact that the vehicle is going to be smaller and lighter Slightly, than the R two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but saying up to kind of gets you out of the you know, like prying eyes mm. of, oh no, you didn't get that much and stuff like that. So seeing up to, you know, kind of covers your butt, but still charging is 10 to 80% within 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that this is probably not an 800 volt architecture, but I could be completely wrong. Again, specs are to be determined because they really haven't even locked them down. Right. Um, still zero to 60 in under three seconds with a uh, tri-motor, dual wow. motor and single motor configuration. So same motor configurations and two battery options. So, so they look looks like they've actually uh, pulled the specs very similar to the R2, but into a smaller package and it's for prop- probably people who want to have a little bit of fun in this kind of vehicle. It's smaller, I right? I think it's more for people who don't need an SUV. It's yeah. something that's more practical. That's like, for example, you if you need an SUV, you need an SUV for some reason, like you have Costco every single week. And got kids and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. And uh, I didn't mention this, but I want to make sure that everyone knew is that the R2 has all the seats. They can fold completely flat so you can actually sleep inside of it. Okay, okay. Completely flat. So even the front seats, this one still has the same trick of right. folding everything down. So that means the cargo room for both of them, are, they're not gonna be comparable. This is gonna be just a little bit shorter, but it's still ample amounts of cargo room, especially because the hatch goes up and the glass is variable. So you can have it flat mm. or you can have it all the way up. It's up right. to you. All right, 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 right. So you can actually, like you said, if you go to Ikea, you got these long beams of stuff. You spent you need to... too much money. <laughs> you want to put it inside the car. Yo, shit can't fit. Oh, we want this. <laughs> this looks great. Let's Open bring it, it inside our house. Open a hatch or a latch, and then you just put it in through your car. So you can do that. So it gives you a lot of options. I think this is, in terms of lifestyle, this might be the vehicle for most people mm-hmm. because of the fact that it does have... It, you can fold it back down. Yeah, yeah. It does have the, the tent options and, and everything is it, like that. Uh, is it cheaper? It's going to be cheaper based on what they are seeing, but we don't know what that number is. Right. Uh, what I can probably tell you is that if they bring it down, like within, it's going to be a $10,000 difference. This, this, the R3 mm-hmm. is the Model 3 of the Rivian line. Right. I get you. I get you. So you have, yeah, how Tesla mod, mod marketed their. Um, EVs, yeah. like you, got, you got the Model Y, you got the Model X, Model S, and now yep. you got the Model 3, which is more affordable for a lot of people. This is the so, everyday vehicle. Right, right. This is the people's vehicle. This is the Lada Nuka. Okay. I get you. I get <laughs> because you. it looks like it. So <laughs> I, it looks great. I like the looks of it. It looks fantastic in terms of being just something that people that don't necessarily want an EV want to yeah. buy. So so with all these uh, Rivian, do they have that signature headlight lamp thing? Yep. It's so, got the happy face on it. <laughs> it's got that oval. You, you pulled up a picture of the Neva <laughs> right. over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but, uh, yeah, 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 see, it kind of has that look with the rounded kind of oh, eyes and okay. everything like that. Yeah, it's already got that. Kind it's of already look. got kind of the happy, friendly. I'm, and hopefully none of the <laughs> issues that the Ladas have in terms of repairs. Yeah, Soviet but, Union, Russia. <laughs> yep. The Lada. <laughs> yep, yep. So uh, there you go. So this vehicle, very exciting. Uh, but... One more thing. Okay, one more thing. Oh, one more thing. Okay, what have you got? Okay, so as uh, Mr. Uh, Scringe, I hope that I said his name right, uh, RJ. 
As RJ un um, unveiled the R3, he brought out another friend. Okay. The other friend is the R3X. Ooh, R3X. So rolling behind the R3 is the R3X, which is basically, if you were to use a Subaru analogy, right. you would have the Forester, okay. which is their SUV boxy looking thing, which is the R2. Right. Then you would have the Subaru Impreza. Ooh, that's Impreza. Impreza. That's, Impreza. Impreza. That's, that's a nice car. Right. And then you would have the WRX. Oh, that's the souped up kind of like sports, yes. off-road, rally. So the WRX is the Rivian R3X because oh, okay. it has the flared fenders. It okay. has the uh, the more aggressive stance. It's a little bit wider, actually. That's why they flared out okay. the fenders. Okay. It has a more aggressive stance. It has trims. It has red. Oh, trim and the on the sports red. Sports red on the mirrors <laughs> and various parts of the vehicle. And it has an interior that's two tone. Okay. So okay. it has a kind of a fun kind of red, uh not red, but yeah, they had in, in this particular trim it was green, racing green. Racing green. With red mirrors. Okay. Flares on the fenders, wider stance. Yeah. And uh in the interior it had yellow. And also some other color in it's, the seats and everything. It's like a, a sports, yeah, it's very sports version of uh, the R3. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what else you got in there? It's it's going to have the same drivetrain, but I have to believe that they've probably done some tweaking to it to make it a little bit quicker. But they're still only saying that it's going to have three, up to 300 miles of range because we don't know enough about it quite yet. Yeah. Uh, I think they're just being conservative because they haven't launched it yet. Yeah. Same three tri-motor configuration, single, dual, and also try um, 360 degree cameras and everything. Everything else is the same. Mm -hmm. You still get two glove yeah. boxes and everything yeah. like that. You still get uh, flashlights in the doors and everything like that. Uh, yeah. Seats five, but it's going to it's, be a little bit tighter than the R2, obviously, just like the R3 it's was. It's like um, how Mini was, you had Mini and then the Mini Cooper and then you had the Mini Cooper S, which same is Same vehicle. The same vehicle, yeah. But just, just tweaked. tweaked sporty, sports, right? Yeah, sports stuff. So, yeah, I definitely like this. Uh, if I if I didn't like the R3 enough, I would probably, I think the pricing, mm. this is going to be R2 at the top, R3 is going to be at the bottom, and the R, R3X is gonna slot somewhere in the middle here. Yeah, or, yeah. It might, or it might even be the same price as the R2 mm -hmm. because it's been tweaked. Right. Right, so we'll have to see. Um, Do they have um, like, uh, you've seen Rivians around, like you said, in Canada right now, I've in seen Vancouver. Them. There's probably a couple right over there. <laughs> are they are they available to like buy? How do they how how do people buy them? You just you put online, your money down. Is it online? Uh, online. You put your money down, and when it's time time for them to call you, they, they deliver call it. You, and then uh, you, you go pick down up. to their uh, showroom down okay, in, in okay. uh, Yale Town, and you go pick it up. Oh right, 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 right. Okay, okay. So yeah. I, I was wondering, it's not like your regular. You know, your sh uh, car dealership, you just go in there and say, okay. Well, I'm just sure that they offer delivery as well, too. But I think that it would be more fun if you went down to their showroom and kind of, you know. Oh, yeah. And you, at least you get the guy to show you all the yeah. insides because and controls. Because one of the things and about, and again, um, Rivian is a pure EV play. That means that they don't have uh, mm. gas engine vehicles to rely on. <laughs> okay. as a backup just in case uh, their EV strategy somewhere down the line one model fails to yeah, deliver yeah. Uh, so they don't have hybrids they don't have any of that they're pure EV play so in in terms of uh, this vehicle being um, th this will probably have the most pre-orders I think oh but you mean the R3 the R3X R3X okay. I, I think so because I think that if they have a vehicle that's this fun that looks this cool that yeah. has a price tag that's accessible to people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that is different. That doesn't look like every white Tesla Model 3 out on the, <laughs> out there. I, <laughs> like, come on. Look at Tesla. They, they're the same. The they're same. the same. Uh, every model, they just look the same. And they drive the same poorly into people's <laughs> bubble tea shops in Richmond. <laughs> Yeah, but how does I'm, that happen? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's uh, they're not con they're not used to the foot uh, accelerator or controls. I don't know because it's just how can you run into a shop or or a, in the middle of the road or something? I don't know. It just just doesn't make sense. It's like, anyway, oh, well, you got to hit the brakes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. So let's not take any thunder away from the uh, from, away from uh, Rivian's three their trio. Which mm. are again the R the R yep. two is the only one that's slated for delivery in twenty twenty six. Twenty twenty six. It will at that time hopefully come with the Nax adapter. 
which oh, is the North American charging like standard. Like I mentioned last time, yeah. Yep. Okay. And then the R3 will the R3 series will definitely have that because they've mm -hmm. just launched it as an R3 R3X. They might even have a third model, who knows? Because they haven't really done anything yet. Yeah, I, I noticed um like you said Rivian and a few other um brands are releasing their EVs. They're releasing the EVs on the market right now. Uh what I've noticed with Tesla is that uh, people are moving away uh, from Tesla because they are they have more choice now, right? More choice is good because and, and, uh, everyone participates in building out the network as well. Uh, one thing yeah. that uh, I didn't put in here, but uh, RJ did mention that they are still building out the uh, Adventure Network, uh, which is what their is charging DC fast charging network that accesses more remote places. So right. on their map, they had specific locations within Canada, BC and Alberta, where these are national parks. So they're oh. actually targeting those areas and they will be, at first, they will be uh, accessible right. to Rivian vehicles, but then open. So yeah, you, when you drive past a, a park or a, a camping area, there's normally a little space for cars to park up, yeah. right? Or drop off, whatever. Yeah. And I've, we, me and you driven up to North BC, yeah, and North there BC. was a, there was a couple of parking spots where it's just empty, nothing there apart from a bin. Yeah, right. So imagine those spaces being used for charging networks, right? I didn't see the map exactly because yeah. it was kind of uh, like the the big picture is yeah. that we're gonna have six hundred of these charging stations wow. across okay. the nation in okay. more remote, adventurous locations. Yeah, uh, I've o I've only seen one Rivian uh, station, and that was in Oregon. Yeah. Uh, very close to, um, I think it was some of the falls, some of the camping areas. So it was one location down mm -hmm. at the outlet mall right, where right. nothing existed. They were the only fast charging and station. With those stations, uh, only Rivians can charge or other cars can charge? At that time, only Rivians could charge, oh, okay. but they're changing that as they roll out the network. All right, right. right, right. Uh, and they will probably very likely be uh, giving their current owners, just like all the other manufacturers, mm -hmm. adapters to use their vehicles on Tesla superchargers. Right. Uh, which is something that I think uh, was mentioned uh, off 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 the beaten path uh, from RJ. And uh, their new vehicles, of course, the R3 mm. for sure are going to have the next built right into it. Right. Uh, R2, I think, might actually be as well too, but that was something that I think that um, as they ramp up for production and everything like that, that might be a change they might make. Mm. So I think that that's a, you know, overall, it's a good thing to have the choices. And if they don't have, uh, the next on it, they will be supplied with an adapter in the box. Yeah, I, I remember when uh, Rivian first came out with their car, the R1, yeah. and I, I thought it was quirky looking, and I thought... Um, the eyes. The, yeah, and uh, I didn't know what the performance was like. The cooking funnel. Yeah, I, I didn't, <laughs> I, it didn't really attract me as much, but um, now that they're going to be releasing other models uh, for other tastes, other, you know, um, kind of like you said, yeah. the the poster child, right? You, you, like the guy for the camping and the guy for yeah. fishing. The, and guy the guy that wants to drive from Argentina all <laughs> the way up to LA while supporting two yeah. electric motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's adventure, right? Yeah, it's adventure, yeah. And uh, if you can cater for those different types of people, different types of, uh, you know, uh, lifestyles, then uh, it, it could be attractive. Yeah. Uh, a different choice, again, more choice for the consumer. Um, you know, right now, or, we can see what well, Tesla's doing the same thing. Yep. Uh, v VW, they're releasing their... In Europe, they have a lot of different models. They have yep. the ID7, ID4, ID3, and all that kind of stuff. Or the ID5, I should say. Um, and they have a it, saloon coming up yeah, too. Yeah, and... and In a, um, uh, a state. State. Yeah. So if Rivian can actually kind of release these models in time, of course, like you said, the launch was 2026. Um, I think that's, that's a good amount of time for them to actually fine tune the R2, 2027 for maybe yeah. R3. So they can fine tune the, the specs and the, and the EVs to, you know, really kind of push to that market. I, I do like what they can offer, what they're offering. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I love to see what the this new well, <laughs> R three looks like. Well, before you see the R three or the R two, you might see one more thing in between. This right. is the one one more thing that no one knew about because the event was not about this. Uh, there is a road to profitability, and uh, I think that uh, Rivian has made some inroads into this on the business and the enterprise side. And one place that they've gone after mm -hmm. uh, aggressively is with the Canadian government and of okay. course, Canada Post. Now Canada Post has been trying to electrify their entire fleet, but they're trying to figure out ways to do it. Okay. Um, obviously 
no one builds the perfect vehicle for them because their perfect vehicle is mm. already in service, but it's not electric. Okay. It's called right. the, uh, uh, it's made by a company called Morgan Olsen. It's kind of the funny looking ones with uh, the, they, you've seen them are these around. Are the, are these are delivery trucks, right? They're about. delivery trucks. Okay, okay, right? okay, okay. So they've been trying to integrate uh, Sprinter vans from, uh, from Ford hybrid and also fully electric. Mm -hmm. They've been trying to do that. A, l a lot of these um, delivery trucks, they run on diesel, right? The diesel, but the Fords do not. The Fords are electric. Oh, okay, the okay. electric Fords. Okay, okay. Right, right. They're, 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 they look like the Sprinter Mercedes-Benz vans, oh, but they're right. completely electric, right? Okay. Uh, so they've been trying to integrate these vehicles into the fleet, but they're not quite right for deliveries because they don't have the doors open. They don't have yeah. right-hand drive because you don't want to get out on the left, otherwise you can <laughs> flatten. <laughs> Usually when you deliver, you deliver on the right because the post the post is, um, boxes are on the right. Yeah. And uh, when you pull up to someone's house, you want to get out on the right. I've seen the UPS trucks. It's, they have no doors. No, and, it's, and, it, and you can like literally walk from one end of the driver's yep. side to the other side of the passenger. It's just you can't, empty. There's no doors. You can't doors. do that with a Sprinter. And even uh, Amazon trucks right now, they're using uh, electric Sprinter vans right. uh, that look like uh, the, the Ford version of the Sprinter van. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Eco e-transit, something like that. Mm. But that van, when you get out, you don't have the option to not look for traffic. You can't just get out the other side. Right, it doesn't have right. that built that way. So Canada Post already has their perfect vehicle. They just wish it was electrified where mm -hmm. there's no tail emissions. Because think about how many of these things drive around your communities and mm -hmm. they're always on and they're always spewing out um, yeah. chemicals and everything into the air, into your neighborhoods, right? <laughs> so if we can get rid of this, it would not only save us uh, on on uh, healthcare, yeah. but it also save us on fuel and running costs because mm. Canada Post is a crown corporation. It's run by us. We pay for it, right? Yeah, that's true. That's you true. It's a government uh, so thing. Yeah, yep. let's save a bunch of money. So what happened is that Canada Post partnered with uh, their longtime uh, partner, which is Morgan Olson, who manufactures the perfect chassis, mm. the perfect carriage. So what they did was uh, they approached with Morgan Rivian. Oh. So th this company who designed the trucks with Canada Post yeah. went to Rivian and said, what Can do you say? design the, the, the car the not the carriage, but the underpinnings, yeah. the chassis, the, 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 entire the, the skateboard of, yeah. for us. And they said, yep, we can do that. In fact, uh, one of the things that uh, they know the best about is fleet management because they supplied almost, they, they have a contract, they fulfilled it uh, with an exclusive for four years with Amazon to produce uh, up to 100,000 vehicles for them. I don't mm. know if they've produced that many. I'm not sure. I haven't seen those numbers yet. This is on their business side. Yeah. Um, but four years, their exclusivity is up. They no longer have to have mm. plants uh, dedicated to right. manufacturing for Amazon now. So now they can take that excess capacity. And because they don't have to even finish these vehicles, they just have to send these these uh, in the underpinnings up to Morgan Olson in Canada to just to, to kind assemble. Of, uh, assemble, yeah. They're assembled in Canada and they have the fleet management software that has been learned from all of the Amazon trucks going around okay. to figure out, okay, these need, this this truck needs to charge, this truck's okay, this truck's good. Yeah, yeah, Send so you, you definitely need that. If, you, if you're operating a massive kind of uh, uh, delivery corporation or you know that kind of transit stuff, uh, you need tracking, you definitely need monitoring, especially those uh, battery, you know, in those in yeah. those vehicles, if it's running low on juice, it needs charging and stuff like that. I'm, I'm sure this might need service next next yeah. year, and we yeah. have to plan that in to have some of these vehicles offline mm. while these other ones come on. And that's something that wow. uh, usually with internal combustion engine vehicles, mm. you either have a bespoke um, solution or you have something that measures every single um, condition of yeah. the vehicle to allow you to save money and service when right. you don't need to service them, right? Because think about it. So many services are done because of interval, because of time. Yeah. But what if you knew that doesn't need any of this stuff? Let's just yeah. pay for this service instead, right? You know, there's, there's going to be an up, a large up, uptake of uh, vehicles, electric vehicles. Now, a, a lot of these delivery, um, you know, companies, they yeah. will, they will, electrify the fleet uh and they already have already ha yeah i'll give you two have. examples uh first of all uh walmart their well, entire okay. fleet of delivery is now from a company called canoe canoe, canoe. was um they have military contracts they were wor they were working right. with nasa to have their transportation wow. vehicles take oh. care of that okay Transpor okay yeah okay. so i have stock in this i've lost 90 percent of my value <laughs> 
<laughs> since I, I sold off most of it when I could recover at least fifty percent of it. But this company has its ups and its downs. Yeah, and they make the funny looking vehicles. They have look like they can be driven from both ends, but really they go in one direction. Oh right, right. You see them in uh, airports and stuff like yeah, that. Sometimes. Right? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe in airports. Bright Drop is the other one. They okay. are already running as DHL vehicles inside Vancouver and with Bolt. The uh, delivery oh, service over that's here. That's right. We we went to the uh, the Vancouver Electrify yeah. show, right? And, and Bright Drop is a GM company. Okay. okay. It's a it's one of their uh, startup style mm-hmm. companies that's run by uh, another individual right. run as a startup with a different CEO. Mm-hmm. FedEx is also using Bright Drop. So right. Canoe, Bright Drop, these are two of uh Rivian's biggest competitors for this space. Uh, obviously, Amazon is using their vehicles. Yep. You know, so you know, in Europe, um, the biggest uh, manufacturer for electric uh, delivery trucks and stuff like that is uh, Volvo. Remember, yes. we yep. spoke to uh, Mike Petrons about That's that, right. and he works for that. And uh, they're electrifying all the Volvo. What do you, what do you call them? Sixteen wheelers, or what do you call them? Rigs? What do you call them? The big, um, the big, big, the big, big ones. Uh, you, you would call them a semi, semi, semi truck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they they're doing a lot in Volvo, and I think in uh, in Europe they're very strict on the emissions. That's and right. uh, stuff like that. So they have to or comply to have whatever percentage of the delivery vehicles to be all electrified now. So and the one that they, uh, Mike was talking about, if you look at his, uh, we have an interview with Mike Petrens. He's one of the case modders, someone that yeah. um, modifies computer cases and makes them amazing. <laughs> uh, he actually works for Volvo, and he let loose that he uh, his his company manufactures all the vehicles on the same lines. Some of them are electric, some of them are diesel, but they've been benchmarking their their particular um, mm. semi-trucks, which are a little bit smaller than the American ones, but they can get a thousand miles wow. of range out of them easily. And this wow. is benchmarking from um, their, their, their plant, from one plant to the one a thousand kilometers away. And they've been doing that for quite a while now. Wow. So, so and- it, is, it is possible and it is uh, happening right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so back to Rivian, because this is a Rivian podcast. We've got so much to talk about still, because Rivian is still losing $43,000 per vehicle. Yeah. Uh, how And and also, uh, Rivian is um, supposedly, um, on the numbers, people are saying that they may not make it to 2026 to deliver the R2. But this is just stuff that you see on the surface. How mm. are they going to get there? Well, I picked out some, in, in addition to the Canada Post partnership, I picked out a couple other things. Well, for starters, um, mm. and, and they survived the pandemic. They're they're doing better with chips and manufacturing now. Okay, yeah. So a yeah. lot of their costs are, are starting to go down on that 43000 per vehicle loss number. Okay, mm-hmm. um, You're going to lose money on the first vehicles because you have to recover your R&D. You have to cover the factory and everything like that. This is just... The cost of doing business to get up yeah, and running. Yeah. Now, they actually had a plan to put a five billion dollar plant in Georgia. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they are going to not do that because they are able to do the manufacturing in Illinois in in their original plant where the R ones were coming okay. off the line. They're okay. going to build the R twos there. Also, mm-hmm. keep in mind that Amazon is no longer exclusive, so they don't need to build as many Amazon vans. They're no longer right. They can they can build less now. They can take and then some take of that. A, and then take more orders for other contracts and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So okay. they're saving 2.5 billion. And the R2, if they can get them out the door at a reasonable mm-hmm. cost, this might be the start of their model three moment when they get to the yeah. uh, R3. So yeah, if you if you look at um how you know uh well, Tesla releasing the Model 3. In fact, Model 3 is the ones that's actually making the profit. Yeah, they, that's right. That's right. Because they everything they learned from the Model S, the Model X. And the Y. Uh, and Model Y. <laughs> actually, Model X, Model Y made it possible for the Y to be wildly popular yeah, because yeah. of the fact that they got everything right. So it's, as far as saving costs, they trimmed their staff back mm-hmm. in 2024. Uh, earlier this year in February. Um, and they, as mentioned, uh, Canada Post will also be running on Rivian now. And there's a lot of vehicles, especially in rural, uh, where they're going to convert these because the routes aren't very long. They're just, they're mm. staring back, yeah. right? Yeah. And the market is still very bullish on Rivian being um, being the one to, to look out for. And because they're a pure EV play, all the things that they're doing behind the scenes, delivery vehicles of Amazon, um, Delivery vehicles for for Canada Post, um, yeah, 
infrastructure and software for Canada Post and for these fleets. They still have the software licenses for this. It's it's almost like a, a different streams of revenue, not just relying on consumer yeah. for their cars. They have industrial, they have contracts with governments yep. and stuff like that. That's all bringing extra revenue into yeah. the company, which helps. Yeah, like uh, I think, um, I don't think they have any government contracts. That's canoe right now. But yeah. if they do pursue that, if, if the military or anything wants to kind of approach them for projects, that's a lot of money that they can just put in the mm. back door to uh, fund their consumer yeah. operations. Yeah, that's if you look at, uh, te uh, not Tesla, but if you look at Elon's SpaceX, half, well, most of it is actually NASA contracts. Yeah. So so yeah. that $5 billion dream, uh, RJ, RJ has said that it's not, uh, it's just on pause right now because we need mm. to figure out how we're gonna get the R2 out the door. We have to make some money. Yeah. So let's get the R2 out the door first. Uh, and then when the R3 comes about, uh, who knows, they might just start up those plans again because it's a lot of money to get that going. The fact that the R2, the R3 and the R3X share the exact same underpinnings with the R3 and the R3X sharing same production even line. more, it's the same production line, yeah. right? So it's just pumping out, pumping out. Yeah. And then it's the trims that, you know, whatever. So if the R2 more. becomes a success that, that everyone believes it is, when the R3 gets to Georgia, hopefully, that plant mm. will be turning out the most number of R3s and R3Xs, right? Because I yeah. believe that that's going to be their mass market vehicle. I know that a lot of people want SUVs, but there's nothing in between the SUV and a compact car right now that's viable. The R3 kind of fills both gaps because it's big enough. Right. It's got the utility because yep. it's sport utility. Yep. Yep. And it's also fun. And mm. it's, 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 it, it looks off-road capable. And I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so many things can go really right, but also because of the EV space right now and so many things what's, are down, what's the so many things can go What's wrong. the feedback on the, the current R, R1? Is it is it overwhelmingly good? Is it something tweaks that needs to be sorted out? Um, what, I think I think overall, overall, it's probably one of the best pickup trucks out there right now as electric, an EV, electric pickup, pickup trucks. trucks. Because think about it, okay. uh, if, 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 if it wasn't good, yeah, people wouldn't want it. And this is usually the vehicle that they buy for themselves, not for a fleet. Right. The Ford F-150 is, is the fleet vehicle. Yeah, F-150 Lightning, that's electric, right? Yep, that's electric, that's the fleet compared vehicle. Compared to Cybertruck, compared to Rivian yeah. R1. And um, you notice that Elon never picks on the Rivian because the Rivian is a really good truck. <laughs> right, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, everyone seems to, if they have it, they love it. Uh, but it's expensive, it's not cheap. Right. Having said that though, if you want to compare it to some people that buy trucks as their personal vehicle, mm -hmm. six figures is actually not not uncommon. And mm. the Rivian is six figures as well too, or less. Right, I see, I see what you mean. It's almost like uh, when Tesla released the S Model S and it was it was expensive. It was very expensive. It was expensive. And pe still people think it's, uh, it's a good car, but it's expensive. It's expensive as heck. Right. Yeah. So the Rivian R1 is similar to that. It's, it's a very good uh, electric vehicle uh, truck. Yeah. It's just expensive because it's a first production run, whatever. Yeah. And um, then as you go along, it, it's going to take time because, um, like I said, e EV space and also having all the production issues yeah. and getting all that done. Uh, R R2, R3, it's going to take a few number of years. And R2 has you know. things that R1 owners wish they had, like two, uh, like even one glove box. <laughs> Yeah, right? we, need, we need a clip book. You know, we you need put a any clip documents box. in there. You know, so um, I I really wish them well, and I think that the yeah. EV space is just kind of it's in a downturn because everyone's trying to figure out what their next move is. Mm. Rivian was the first one to kind of say, "This is what we're doing," yeah. and we have some really good vehicles that are different than everyone else's that mm -hmm. you might want to buy. Uh, the next one that kind of pop is i'm hoping is lucid because lucid um they went expensive and this is peter rollins who was the guy behind yeah. the model s the luxury one right his next move is going to be something that's much more affordable so he's got an suv he's got a sedan he's right. gonna need another kind of four-door more compact because the family the lucid is huge the lucid air is huge it's a big vehicle it's right? very expensive so he needs something smaller luxury that can scale up fast and so i know he, that he can do that because he's right. worked for that he's worked for Elon. He made the the Model S. He was the mm. lead. He was the lead guy on, okay. on that. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's got tons of um, Saudi money behind him on that. He's <laughs> yeah, building money, money helps. <laughs> money helps. Um, there was some controversy with him taking a pay package, but that was because he's the guy that worked for Lotus. 
He's the guy. Like he was the guy. Right? He's the brainchild. He's the brain brains yeah. behind this, yeah. right? And without him, it brains. doesn't kind of go right. Yeah. Um, so that was negotiated way in advance, probably before everything. Yeah. Happens, a lot right? of these um, pay packets, pay bonuses are, are already agreed, like way before, like three, four years What's before. What's he gonna say? Like no. <laughs> yeah, and no. then when when people hear about it like four or five years later, oh, oh no! But it's already been agreed like years ago when he, he was probably making peanuts back then, right? Yeah. Or you know, based on what this he, was, what know. it took to take him away yeah. from Tesla, which he knew would become a very successful company right, at that right. time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. Yeah. So wow, what an interesting time for Rivian. Yeah. Uh, for the EV space in definitely, general, definitely, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope this all pans out. Twenty twenty six is going to be interesting for Rivian. Twenty twenty seven, maybe even more interesting. And but you know there are some cautions here about mm. things needing to happen in a certain way, and also we have some election stuff coming up that may change things, good yeah. or bad. Yeah, and we also you know crypto is going doing good. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it will not do so good at that time, but who knows, all right? But for the rest of us, we are optimistic. And as they start rolling out those uh, $100 deposits for the rest of the world, for their R of Rivians- I uh, might do one. I'm, it's refundable, because, so I might put my money you know, down to see I, what happens. I'm still on you know, second thoughts about my, my Tesla Model 3 purchase, because I still haven't decided what to get. If this one you know, looks good- I'll definitely do it on an R3. So maybe I can transfer that payment to the R3, but I, I still want the opportunity All to right, have an right. R2 if it comes to Canada, you know, yeah, because yeah. at that time- I think the R2 would be good for you because you got, you know, the family and everything. It might be a better vehicle. It might be a better vehicle. For me though, yeah, the R3 Yes. Yeah. It, it looks it looks great. I congratulate. I, I think I think I look good in that. Well, um, that's all we know about right. the uh, the R three, R two, and R three X launch from Rivian. Mm. And uh, we want to again thank you so much for all yeah. the comments that are coming through, including some of the ones that are not so, uh, you know, like inspiring. But you know, <laughs> if we had a little bit more detail on what you were talking about there, we might be able to address it a little bit constructive, constructively, right? Yeah. I mean. Oh, this is no good. What does that mean? What is no good? Is it this part, this part, or this part? If it's everything, I can't help you, <laughs> right? But we still appreciate your comments. At any mm. rate, um, make sure that you have us subscribe because we're a YouTube exclusive podcast. Yes, right. We are not anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We're not on Spotify. We're not on uh, any of the other pod platforms. We're only here on YouTube and YouTube music as well too, yeah. as our podcast show every Wednesday at noon. And also mm -hmm. don't forget to interact with us on social. I know that we've been a little bit quiet, but you know, you can still ping us there. We're still listening at our podcast show on both X, the Elon network, and also yes. on Instagram, Instagram at our podcast show, and maybe even on threads on occasion as well too. Sometimes we get busy. Yeah. And leave <laughs> it, us a comment. Yeah. Those comments, yeah. super helpful. Even the ones that mm. are uh, a little bit vague. Until next time, bye for now. Bye-bye.